In this movie, we're going to take a look at UV mapping. UV mapping is the process of taking UV points from a surface and placing them flat to describe a mappable area. Essentially, they provide a holdout area for images to be placed. We cannot paint directly onto our surface, therefore we need to apply UVs in order to allow painting. You could kind of think of them as a clean sheet of paper being wrapped around your polygon object. Now the goal of UVs is to make them human readable. What this means is that we'll be able to look at our flattened two-dimensional UV set and be able to decipher individual pieces and parts. Now sometimes the pieces and parts are a little too small or a little too fragmented to really know what they are, but part of keeping them human readable is merely making sure that they're rotated properly and organized in a neat manner, and they're not just a large cluster of individual edges and points. To begin, I want to make sure that my model is nice and clean. I'll switch over to the channel box. You can see that I've got a lot of transforms there. And we've also got some history. So let's start by choosing Edit, Delete by Type, History, and also Modify Freeze Transformations. Now let's go ahead and open up the UV Texture Editor. I'm going to open the editor into a specific viewport. I'll choose Panels, Panel, UV Texture Editor. And let's go full screen, and we'll zoom out. When we go into our UV Texture Editor, we see that we have a grid in the middle of our space. This grid shows us the 0 to 1 texture space. We have four quadrants here, but only one is the true 0 to 1 texture space. We can use all of the space that we see here, even outside of our grid, in order to map our UVs, but typically we like to try and keep things within this region. Once we map all of our UVs into this region, then we can move them around and use multiple regions. For our Crow model, we'll focus just on our true 0 to 1 texture space, and you can see the number values there. Down at the bottom we have 0, and it goes over to 1 in a graph-like fashion. This bottom row of numbers represents the U direction, and these numbers here, ascending 0 to 1, show us the V direction. Now these white lines here are the actual UVs, or a UV set. We have these on our model as a result of starting with an object that had UVs. When we create a primitive object such like a sphere or a cube, there is an option there for having UVs placed on the primitive once you create it. When we built our crow, the primitive object that we chose to start with had UVs on it. So as we built the model out, those UVs just kind of expanded into the shape that you see there now. We don't need these UVs and they're really just junk. We'll just ignore them and start laying out UVs for the rest of our character. So we'll switch back to our perspective. And to begin the UV process, we start by selecting faces. Once we have groups of faces selected, we'll then choose a projection that matches that selection in order to project the UVs onto the surface. So let's take a look at how this process works. I'm going to right click and go to face, and we'll project. UVs for the wing. And I'm going to grab all of the faces that make up this side of our character's wing. And let's switch back over to the polygons menu set. And our UV tools are located under create UVs. At the very top, let's break this window off. In the very top section here, we have all of our different types of projection methods. We're going to go through several of these, but for the wing, I think it'll be best to use Create UVs based upon camera. Now what this will do is project UVs based upon my camera view. So I want to 
orient my camera view so that I am best viewing all of the faces that I want to project. I'm going to turn my grid off so we can see things a little better. And there I can see all of my faces selected with the exception of the faces on the back side of the wing. We're going to have to deal with those a little bit separately. As we project this, those back UVs are going to overlap with the front UVs. Let's choose Create UVs, and we'll close the window. And now we have a planar projection that has been added. And now we'll switch over to my UV Texture Editor to see the results of our projection. Now what we have here are the selected polygon faces. If I right-click, I can go to UV, and then that will show me all of the UVs of the selected model. So now I see those junk UVs that were there before, as well as my projected wing UVs. Since UVs often overlap in our UV Texture Editor, we can grab just a small portion of a UV set and choose Select, Select Shell, to choose all of the UVs that are interconnected. This makes sorting out and selecting our UV shells a lot easier. I'll hit W, and then we can just move our UVs like we would move a normal object. And we'll just slide those out. And we're just moving these off into empty space. And this empty space here just allows us a, a big, vast area to work in. Now, since I projected the front of the wing as well as the back of the wing, I have overlapping UVs. I need to split those apart. Now we can actually see when we have overlapping UVs by going to Image and checking Shade UVs. Let's frame this up. And here we can see that we have kind of a, a strange color. And what we really should be seeing is either an all blue color or an all red color. But we get somewhat of a purple type color there where we're mixing red and blue, and that's because we're seeing the back faces, which are red, and then the front faces, which are blue, and the, because they're sitting on top of each other, we're getting that blending between the colors. To split these apart, I'll go back out into the viewport, in my shaded perspective view. I'm gonna right click and choose Edge, and I'm gonna double click on the edge loop that is dividing my model in half. I'll just make sure that that grabbed it all. And really, I only care about the edge loop that goes around the wing. I don't really care that anything else got selected because I haven't mapped any of those UVs yet. I'll switch back to my UV Texture Editor, and I'm going to choose Cut. And this will separate the UVs along that selected edge. Now we can also choose from the Polygons menu from within the UV Texture Editor, Cut UV Edges. Either one of these will work, basically the same thing. We'll choose Cut, and that will split those edges that I have selected away. Now because I had the entire body edge loop selected, it also cut all of these UVs over here in my 0 to 1 texture space. But again, since I haven't mapped any UVs yet, I don't really care that any of those are being cut. I will eventually have to reproject all of those UVs there, so we're not too concerned about those. Now, if I cut these properly, I'll be able to separate these two shells. So let's right click, I'll go to UV, and I'll just click on a single UV and choose Select, Select Shell, and we'll slide that off. And now we can clearly see our two different colors and our front wing and our back wing. Now our UV shells here look pretty good, but before we can really call them finished, we want to try and smooth those UVs out, and we want to smooth them based upon an unfolding operation that matches our model. This tool is located right here. We have an icon for the smooth UV tool. Let's select the front of our wing here first. And I'll click on this tool, and that's going to place me into an interactive mode 
inside of that tool itself. And the Smooth UV tool gives us two options, Unfold and Relax. The one we want is Unfold. This one here will allow me to interactively try to reposition the UVs based upon the UV's local space on the model. This saves me a lot of time that I don't have to try to guess or manually push UVs around to try to match it up to the model that it came from. So we'll choose Unfold, and to operate this tool, I'll just click on the Unfold name and scroll left to right. When I bring it to the right, it actually runs the operation. If I bring it back to the left, it will act as an undo. So we have an intermediate area there that we can kind of look and see what is going to work best. So this is without any unfold, and then we can gradually see those changes as we move to the right. For the most part, moving all the way to the right is going to give you decent results. So I'm going to just bring that all the way over, and then go to the second wing, and we'll try the same thing, and I'll choose unfold. And then when I bring this one all the way over, we see the wing kind of crumbles, explodes, and then scales way out. But in the end, it still looks good. But what has happened here is that since the object itself, or this UV shell, was flipped, and we had that red color, the Unfold tool had to invert the UVs first, and then smooth them out. So I'm going to just undo that completely. And you can see now we go back to that red color. So prior to doing my Unfold Smooth, I'm going to flip these UVs so that they're facing the right way and so that they'll turn blue for us. We can flip the UVs by using any one of these two icons right here. One will flip horizontally, the other will flip vertically, or one will flip in the V and the other will flip in the U. I really just want to flip this in the U, and that again gives me kind of the opposite side of the wing. And then we'll choose Unfold and smooth that out. And you can see that now it doesn't try to invert and then rescale. So overall here, our Unfold tool is going to minimize any distortion that will come from the UV shell or come from our UV projection. Our goal here, remember, is to be able to paint within these UV areas. So if the UV shell doesn't match back to our model, we're going to end up with distortion. And this can be in the form of a texture looking like it's stretched or even pinched. So for instance, I'll select just a UV here. I'm going to hit W, which will then back me out of the Unfold tool. But if I had this UV here, where we can see this is where it should live, but if I had it all the way over here, when I try to paint in between this area, or in between these two UVs, the color that I put there is going to be compressed or pinched in between those two UVs because the actual space, and let's undo, should be like that. So this here is more representative of the space that's on the model. The further we deviate from that shape, the original shape of our model, the more distortion we're going to get out of our texture.